and welcome to a week in the life of a home-educated teenager. To introduce myself quickly, my name is Daisy, I'm 18 and I live in England. I've been home-educated since I was 9 and I'm currently studying for my A-levels. Basically, I wanted to make this video because I'm, hopefully, going off to university next year and I wanted to document this time in my life before everything changes. Also, I think a lot of people are curious about home education. A lot of people don't really know what it's like, and many people who start or who are thinking about starting don't really know what to expect. The thing about home education is every single person who does it is different, and I'm not trying to speak for the whole home ed community here. This is just how I organize my life, and hopefully it inspires you or gives you an insight into what homeschooling is like. Okay, so starting off with Monday morning, I have a little ritual with myself where every Monday I'll wake up early and get the week off to a good start by reflecting on the week that's just been. So throughout each week, I take notes of things that happened to me. And then in this journal entry, I categorize it into my highs and achievements and my lows and lessons. I'm really into this whole self-improvement and journaling sort of thing. And I find this method really helps me to let go of the past and basically not catastrophize about life because I often find even when I have really bad weeks or what feels like a really bad week, I actually reflect on it and I find that I had more highs than lows because more happens in a week than you realize and there is a lot to be grateful for. I also use it as a method to hopefully learn from my mistakes so I write this list at the end of each entry with things that I can take into the next week and then I usually reflect on those a couple of times throughout the week just to make sure I'm staying on track with my mindset. At 8.30 I meditated and then got dressed ready for my climbing session. So you're probably already realizing that this is not the week in the life of a typical home ed student because in fact there are no typical home ed students. Home education can literally be anything. Journaling and meditating aren't home ed things, they're just me things, they're just things that I do. And climbing, I guess, is a little out of the ordinary as well, but it is actually a home ed group that I go to and it's a really nice way of getting some exercise and connecting with other homeschoolers. And now let's just enjoy me struggling with this very difficult route, which was actually a 5 plus, but me and my friend both agreed it should definitely not be a 5 plus. It was really, really difficult. How are we doing that, Daisy? Yeah, you can see I get a little bit ragey when I can't complete a route. <laughs> Here I am doing slightly better. And after two hours of climbing, I went back home and got some lunch. And now onto the bit we've all been waiting for, studying. So I like to take it a little bit easier on a Monday because I've just been climbing, so I'm tired and I'm getting off to a bit of a later start. So what I usually do is do one of my poem PowerPoints. Essentially, for my English Literature A-level, I have to study 20 Robert Frost poems, and taking notes for all of those just felt like a bit daunting on top of all the notes I have to take and all the essays, essays I have to write for all of my subjects, so instead I decided to study poetry through video. I just find this makes poetry a little more fun to study, and hopefully more memorable, and I actually upload these videos onto my channel, so you can check one out if you want to. Here's a little behind-the-scenes insight into how they're made. At 4.15, I took a break to clean my room, get changed, and listen to one of my favourite podcasts. Then the video editing got a bit boring, so I decided to plan out my week instead. This is the method I use to plan out my weeks. So at the top we see it says Daisy's Planner, and this is the week. And then I always like to put a quote at the top, and I usually do... A 21 Pilots or Imagine Dragons quote. Okay. Some kind of song lyric anyway, but I couldn't find one this week. So I've actually done one that, this is something that I wrote in my journal once, like months ago. Actually when I was quitting a job that I was bored of. So I said, it's difficult and really scary, but that's how I know it's worthwhile. So I read that back the other day and I really liked it. So I thought it might be inspiring for this week. Then I have two to-do lists. I split it into my study to-do list and my ordinary to-do list. Yes, so this is my to-do list. Sorry for the terrible picture. Sorry this video is all over the place. Basically, I did explain in a video what all the stuff on my to-do list means, but it was so rambly and I want this video to be as concise as possible, so I'm just going to go through it quickly with you now. So, organize my Lancaster trip, 
wanted to go on a trip to Lancaster because that's where I want to go to university. Want to make sure the town's nice. Go queen dress shopping. That's for my theatre group. I'm playing the queen in our play. I need an outfit. Paint and start Buffy series seven. I like painting. I like watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> um, back up cliques episodes. That's a TV show I'm attempting to write and I needed to back up what I'd written. Print a short story I'd written. Again, I like writing. Brainstorm some other writing stuff. Message my friend online. Watching the Neil Gaiman speech is something that my climbing instructor recommended I do because he knows I'm creative and he said it was good. Research my trip abroad. That is after my A-levels. I'm planning to go abroad with my aunt and I need to research places we can go. Uh, Have an old iPod. Need to clear the information off it. Put up the Christmas tree. Recite the lines for my play. Now onto my study to-do list. So I always have stuff left over from the week before. That's what the top one is. That was a book I'm studying and I needed to finish my notes, which I was supposed to do the previous week. Then I needed to finish my poetry video, uh, do some university stuff. And then the last four are about the subject I was doing this week. So the way that I study is I do one subject per week on rotation of my three A-level subjects. And this week was an ancient history week. So the R3.2 is Rome, section three, chapter two, and chapter three as well. I needed to take rough notes on both of those and then polish my notes. I know notes don't need polishing, but for me they do. Uh, You'll see it later in the video. That's just the way that I like to do it. Underneath these, we have my habit tracker. This is so useful for repetitive tasks, things that you want to do every day or at least consistently that you don't want to put on your to-do list. So here I have just a list of things. They're very random. The only thing they have in common is that I want to do them regularly. I think most of them are self-explanatory. Read rehearsal means reading the book, The Rehearsal, which was one of my texts for my A-levels. Reflect means noting down things to put in my journal entry at the end of the week that you saw me do at the start of the video. Yes, they all have their own colour. It makes it look really nice and really motivates you to actually do these repetitive tasks because then all the boxes are filled in. It looks beautiful. I hope that explanation made some kind of sense. Then the last bit of the planner, which you can see surrounding the habit tracker, is my rough plan for when I'm going to do things on my to-do list. Basically, when you have a week-long to-do list instead of a daily to-do list, it's really easy to put things off and think, I have a week, I'll get it done. And usually that doesn't end well. So I try and plan as much as I can when I'm going to do things that are on my to-do list. And this actually helps me motivate myself each day because I know what I'm doing, I know what my intentions are, and it's not so overwhelming as the weekly to-do list. After this, I ate my dinner and then I did a little bit more editing on my poem PowerPoint Unfortunately, I didn't finish it, but on most Mondays, I do finish it. This was just quite a long poem. And then at 6.30, I went to my youth theatre rehearsal. I've been in this group for a couple of months now, and this one is not a home ed group. So all the other kids that go are in schools. So I joined this group because I wanted to try out theatre. And I felt I needed more things to do outside of my studies to stop me going crazy, basically. With this style of home education that I do... I do spend a lot of time by myself. So to me, clubs like this are really important. It is harder to find things like this when you don't have a school running them, but I promise you there are some great things out there and it's actually great practice for adult life. If you seek these things out yourself and do them independently, like I do, rather than just being handed them on a platter like you are at school. So as I said, the production we're doing this Christmas is Sleeping Beauty. I'm playing the Queen, as you can see. This play is written by Rufus Norris, so please don't copyright me, I don't own this. (laughs) Rehearsal ended at 8.30, then when I got home, I ate some oats for a snack, watched the end of the Graham Norton show, then I unpacked my bag, put my pyjamas on, took my makeup off, and then around 20 to 10, I started reading a book but I was really tired from my exhausting day, so I went to sleep around 10 o'clock. So I just woke up, a bit of a contrast to yesterday, because it is quarter past nine. I had a bit of a rough night, um, I woke up loads of times, and I read 
my book for only about 15 minutes before it started getting dull. It was probably about 10 o'clock that I stopped doing that, but I didn't get to sleep until at least 11, because I don't know what was going on. Just thoughts distracting me, but I did feel really physically tired, so I think that's why it's good that I got a bit more sleep this morning, because I don't put on alarms, except on days where I need to be somewhere, like on Mondays. Yeah, normally I don't have an alarm because I found I used to have them, but I've just sort of trained myself to wake up early, so I don't really need them, which I know doesn't sound very convincing when I've just woken up at 9 today. But I usually wake up around 7 at the moment, and I found that I have been having struggles getting enough sleep and sleeping well, so I'm not going to force myself to get up earlier. And also, I find when you have an alarm, it means you have to have your phone in your room, unless you have one of those old-fashioned alarm clocks. I know some people do that. But yeah, if you have your alarm on your phone, like I do, you have to have a screen in your room. And I don't like to get out of bed as soon as I wake up, so I would hang around in bed and then it's really tempting to go on your screen. So what I've been doing at the moment is not having an alarm, putting my phone in a different room before I go to sleep. And then I can wake up and I won't even know what the time is. I can just relax and make sure I've got enough rest and make sure I start the day positively, like, just with myself, without, like, engaging with the world. But I think this is one of the great things about home education. You don't have to get up at a certain time every day, which is obviously, it's just more pleasant. <laughs> but I think that a lot of, a lot of home-ed kids probably do have alarms, like, especially in our family. My older sister has alarms, she gets up at, like, six or something most days, and goes out for a walk in the morning. Um, when it's dark. My little brother even, uh, he doesn't have alarms but he like schedules his day, again like willingly. Um, he, I think he does like to be in bed by a certain time and he always makes sure he goes for one walk every day and he doesn't eat a certain time before he goes to bed and things like that. So I just think that when people are given the freedom to sort of, I don't know, it's really hard to explain this stuff. Um, I guess when kids are given the freedom to like become passionate about learning and what they're doing, then we willingly will be productive and be intentional with our time and get a healthy lifestyle, I don't know, without being like forced into it because I think a lot of school kids, you know, will spend their childhoods resenting things like waking up early because people have just like forced them to do it. Whereas, I did have lots of years, I remember when I first started being home ed, where I would lie in until 10 and probably not get dressed lots of days. But, with time, I discovered that I am a morning person, I like getting up early, it makes me feel better. So that's what I started doing. I just had that freedom to take control of my own life. And I, don't, I don't want this video to turn, turn into like, this is why home, home education is angelic and perfect. <laughs> But it does have lots of benefits, and I'm enjoying the fact that I can get a lion on days like this. Rant to a camera over. Tuesday morning started off with me getting my vitamin and then making myself a very fancy breakfast. So I had quinoa porridge this morning, and it's so freaking good. You can see here I topped it with banana, cacao nibs, hemp seeds, and agave syrup. So tasty. So I took my time eating my breakfast. I read my book, I chatted to my mum, and I planned out my day a little bit, so that meant that I didn't get dressed until 10.30, and here I am demonstrating my everyday makeup routine, which is just putting mascara on my upper lashes. Sorry, my dog is barking. This just makes me feel good without spending too much time on it, and honestly, the thing that takes the most time is wiping off the bits of excess that I get all over my skin, because I am so messy. <laughs> So me and my mum decided to go out that morning, so while I was waiting for her to get ready, I collected some leftover rice and chilli and cut myself up some vegetables to take for lunch. So it's really good to use these like little gaps in your day where maybe you're waiting for someone or you just have a bit of time before you do something to do something productive and prepare ahead so that you don't have to spend time later doing less important tasks. 
We went to a secondhand dress shop where we looked for a dress for me to wear for my play and we bought two dresses which you can see here but I actually have decided not to use either of these. It's just over a week until my play when I'm recording this narration and I just thought the gold one was a bit over the top and I wouldn't feel comfortable in it and the brown one wasn't really appropriate for a queen but we had a nice outing together, we did some other errands as well so we got back about 2.30. Then I started on my ancient history chapters but as you can see I was very tired and very not motivated to do it. It's a really good thing about home education that you can go out on the weekdays or in the mornings, you know you're not restricted to when you're not at school. So we could go shopping when it wasn't rush hour or anything, there wasn't many people around. But in a way that's also a bad thing because it means that often you choose to do fun things instead of doing work things early on and then you tire yourself out. So you have to resist the temptation sometimes and find a balance or else you suffer the consequences as I did today. So at 3.30 I took a break to text my auntie and watch some YouTube. So I'm not feeling very motivated to study right now and I think it's because I'm quite tired and because I don't have a clear goal. I just sort of sat down and I was like trying to get as much done as possible. So I, I've just been looking at the chapter. I'm about here and if I turn it over, just up back. Then it's the end of the chapter. I think I can do that today. So that's the goal. Another thing I'm going to do to help me is put on some music in the background, which probably is not going to help me. <laughs> but I just need something to stimulate me and like keep me in a good mood. I love this song. Well, I finished the chapter. Um, and I should feel happy, but now I'm worried that I don't have enough information because this is quite a short chapter, but I have like no notes. I don't feel I know anything about this subject. So this is how my notes are looking at the moment. We just have some really rough paragraphs about the three things or four things in covered in the chapter. And then these are questions they put on the topic review. So it's sort of like things you should know about and I don't know about them. So I'm definitely not finished with this chapter. Like I said, I don't feel like I know anything about whatever this chapter is about. Uh, so I'm gonna have to research it a bit online tomorrow or something. Gonna have to try and organize the notes and get answers to these questions. But I'm gonna leave it here for today because I'm just not motivated to work today. After this, I had my dinner, had really nice chats with my mom and my sister, messaged my friend online, watched Lego Masters, had a bit of a dance in the kitchen, then I watched The Next Step in my bed. Yay. This morning I woke up feeling pretty bad, which happens to me a lot. Um, and I think if you wake up feeling negative, it just you're not alone um, and it doesn't mean you have to have a bad day. Basically last night when I got into bed I watched an episode of The Next Step which is one of my favorite TV shows. I think I watched it because I was starting to feel negative and I sort of wanted to like drown it out and engage in something positive. But then I went to sleep and because I had my phone in my room, this is proof that my my thing works about putting your phone in a different room because my phone was still in my room because I'd been watching the next step last night. So I watched YouTube this morning and I know you shouldn't be able you shouldn't have to put your phone in a different room. You should just have self-control. The negative thoughts from the night before like carried over and in general I just seem to wake up feeling negative. But basically what's going on is I'm freaking terrified about this play I'm gonna be in. So yeah, I just needed to get out of my head this morning so that's why I watched YouTube. Okay so I read back what I showed at the beginning of the week, what I've learned from the week and um, I really liked what I wrote, good weeks can have bad days so I was like even if this is a bad day it's alright, it won't ruin the week, it won't ruin the vlog and 
I wrote that it was enough. I wrote that, you know, things will lift you up when you least expect it and stuff like that. So this is so helpful to me. Ugh, like giving myself like encouragement for the week ahead is really helpful. I definitely recommend it. So what I did then is I sort of made a plan. I was like, right, I'm gonna get up and I was in the middle of a YouTube video that I was quite enjoying. So I went and put my phone on to charge and then I was like, right, I'm gonna finish this video. I'm gonna watch Unjaded Jade because she always makes me feel so much better. Um, and then I'm going to get myself a nice breakfast. I'm gonna get in a nice outfit. I'm going to meditate. I watched the final vlog from Jade of her like interrailing experience and I've just loved those vlogs so much and it made me feel like excited about life again, which is great. Love this. So I, it's only Wednesday, it's only the third day of the week. So I've been really down about my productivity so far this week. I think I've had like three days in a row now because I didn't vlog Sunday obviously, but Sunday was a terrible day <laughs> and I had so much to get done and I didn't get any of it done. And, like, on Monday I didn't get everything I wanted to get done, done. Same with Tuesday. It's been a bit rubbish, but it's only Wednesday, so I'm gonna try and be really productive today. Don't really have anything else to do. Here's an insight into my meditation practice. I use an app called Smiling Mind, which is not one of the very well-known ones. It's actually an Australian app. But it's really good. What I like about it is you can download the meditations. So I don't have Wi-Fi in my bedroom. So it means that you can do it without using the internet. And there's also this really cool feature where you can record how you feel before and after the meditation. So it gives you a really concrete insight into how meditation is making you feel better. You can just see it right in front of you that five minutes ago you were less happy than you are now because you've given your mind a break. So I definitely recommend this app and I definitely recommend meditating. Not gonna lie, I was thinking about tripping over my dress in the middle of our play for like that whole meditation. <laughs> this is getting ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I just, meditation really helps me to pass the charge away. <laughs> I'm such a mess right now. I don't know, meditation is great, that's what I'm trying to say. At 9am I moved on to studying and this is one of my techniques that I use to help me focus or to motivate myself. Sometimes I'll listen to soundtracks on YouTube. It really helps you block everything out and just get in the focused mindset, especially when you pick a really epic soundtrack that is like, just makes you want to, you know, do business, you know. <laughs> now if it looks like I'm not doing much in these clips, that's because I wasn't. My computer decided to be really, really laggy this day and it was super annoying. Well, I've been studying for about 40 minutes and it's not going well. It just feels like everything's so difficult. But yeah, I had a bit of a cry about it and I think that's good because it was, I think it was quite good that I just got, just let the stress out about the studying. Uh, I swear that's my password. I'm trying to email my notes to myself. I'm gonna go on the bigger computer. Yeah, and then I'm gonna go on the big computer and hopefully it's less laggy. And my mum was just saying about going out today to like this garden center to get us some Christmas lights. So she was gonna do that and I've sort of been looking forward to doing that, but I don't wanna do it today because I don't wanna go out again today. I'm not gonna get anything done. That just made me feel like I'm running out of time and like I'm just not, gonna have enough time to get everything done. I just told her, I was like, mom, if you're going out today, I'm not coming because I need to get stuff done. So decisive for my own future. Going great so far. Don't you just tell me. Eventually the computer started working for me and I managed to get some work done on my notes. And to make sure I didn't get out of the mindset of the studying I was doing, while I made my lunch, I listened to this great podcast called Emperors of Rome, which is very educational, really helps me with my ancient history studies, but is also quite fun to listen to. So I listened to that while I made lunch and then made notes on any important parts. <laughs> this is what happens when I study in the dining room. Eyes staring at me. Oh, look at the new face. 
At 1.15 more studying ensued but I managed to get my notes finished by 10 past 2 and then I printed them out. After this I took my dog for a walk. I've just come back from my walk and it took me over an hour and that's not because I go on really long walks, it's because I did the same walk twice. I literally did this circle walk near my house and then I went back out and did it the opposite way and that's because I forgot the dog poo bags um, when walking my dog and he did what dogs do and then I realised I didn't have any bags so I came back and I basically <laughs> asked everyone in the house if they would come with me <laughs> to go back the way I just walked because I was I just didn't want to walk the same way I just walked so my lovely sister agreed to come with me and I feel like a good citizen now and now I'm getting back to my ancient Roman notes so so earlier I finished my notes for Rome 3.2 and I managed to get it out to five pages instead of the two I had yesterday um, because I went online and I looked up loads about Vespasian, uh, loads about Titus, and loads about Domitian. So that's not like really in the chapter much, but I just wanted to know it and really get a good foundation in who the emperors were. So I'm really happy that I've done that. I feel like I've done the chapter fairly well. And actually the next chapter is about their personalities, which I have done a lot of research on and I've got some notes on. So I feel like I'm sort of, not only have I completed the chapter, but I'm almost a little bit ahead, which is really good. But what I wanted to show you is the way I've done these notes. You might notice that the first page is completely blank. And that's because Yes, so the reason this is blank is because at the start of each chapter's notes I like to do a checklist of sort of the key facts from the notes because there is a topic overview at the start of each chapter but they're so vague and that's not, that's not going to help me. So I've got an example of a, uh, another chapter I did on to Tiberius. Um, so this is my checklist, we've got like the views of the sources and then I'll basically, when I'm revising, I'll probably look at the checklist and then I'll um, be like, okay, views of the sources on Tiberius, do I know what Tacitus and Diocassius' views were, and then do I know what Suetonius's were, and then you can see down here, this is the actual notes. So we have Tacitus, we have Diocassius, um, they're together because they have the same sort of opinion, and then Suetonius is in another one. So you can see I use a lot of capitals in my notes. Um, so it's mainly like the key points that are in the checklist are capitalised. I just really try and break up my notes to make them a lot easier to read and just easier to absorb the information. So as well I put quotes from the sources in bold and italicised, italicised, I don't know how you say it. Um, so that's what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to write it out by hand because I found that's actually a lot easier because you don't have to keep scrolling down the document, you can just look at the paper side by side. So that's what I'm going to do and I also do it for my sociology notes so I just thought I would show you this for a bit of reference. This was the global development chapter, we've got demographic differences, um, and that stuff. So then, yeah, again, this is the actual notes, demographic differences, um, developed societies, developing societies. So yeah, this sort of explains what I was saying yesterday or on Monday about <laughs> taking my notes and then polishing my notes. So you would have seen in yesterday's clip, just like just a block of text was what my notes were yesterday, um, whereas here I've really split it into sections and then I like to summarise each point. Here is my finished checklist. I wrote this one out by hand instead of typing it because that's what I've started to do now because I've realised that it's a lot easier to t make a checklist when you have the paper next to you rather than having to scroll down the document each time you're trying to make a new point. After this, I finished my poetry video that I started on Monday and then I had my dinner. I had some pasta with vegan white sauce and garlic bread. After I'd eaten that, I played with my little sister for a couple of hours. Excuse our very messy 
falling apart, kitchen. <laughs> Win, I can't really want you to zoom in on my face. Why? Because <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> Next, I tried to do some writing. I try and aim to do this about once a week, uh, but it didn't go so well today. I'm trying to write a TV show, as I said earlier in the video, but because I've got so much on at the moment, I just didn't seem to have enough space in my mind to be creative. So I only did this for about an hour, and after that I got a shower, I chatted with my sister a little bit, and I went and read a book before I went to bed. Thursday morning. Woke up around 7.30, decided to do some reading, and then watched some YouTube while I had my breakfast. It's currently about half nine and I just got dressed, listened to some All Time Low, love that band, and I did some meditation. Um, I did a gratitude and joy meditation. Today I'm feeling really good. Um, I was motivated to read this morning, which is really unusual. I feel like this week in a life isn't that representative because I honestly do not read this much usually, like I used to, but lately I haven't read very much at all. But Here's another one of my techniques for keeping myself motivated. Sometimes if I don't want to work for very long, I will put an hour timer on, or sometimes even shorter than that. And I tell myself, right, you only have to work for an hour so I don't get distracted. I just work, work, work for that hour and then I get to take a break. And it's so nice when that timer goes off. <laughs> My hour just finished and I could feel my brain going to sleep as I did it, but I think I've made quite good progress. After this, I took my dog for a walk to clear my head. And this is one of my favorite things about home education that you can take breaks when you want to and when you need to. And you can really focus on the aspects of the subject that you need to. You really have control over your own time. So as long as you can learn to be disciplined, I think home education can have a lot of benefits because I knew with this chapter that I knew about the emperor's personalities. So that meant that I could get through that pretty quickly and then focus on the other parts of the chapter that I needed to spend more time on understanding. So I feel I really know myself as a student now and I know how to be most efficient with my time and how to motivate myself and when I'm in the right mindset and when I'm not. When I got back home, I attempted to do more studying, but I was just not motivated. So instead I decided to make myself lunch and tried to get myself in the mood by listening to another podcast about classics. This one is called That's Ancient History. It's pretty fun. And I made myself this gorgeous like Mediterranean bean mixture thing that goes in pita bread. It is so good. Then it was back to studying and this session was quite in contrast really to the session that I did earlier in the day, the very short burst, because this time I decided to sit down for quite a long time, get cozy, just relax and take it slow. So this is sort of the two extremes of studying that I go between. And as you can see, sometimes I do both in the same day. It just depends on how your mind is feeling. Sometimes I just want to get it over with and really focus. And sometimes I don't mind spending longer if I can just stay sane and allow, allow myself to get a little bit distracted. So while I did this, I wrapped myself in a blanket. This has got to be the number one benefit of being home educated, surely. You can sit and study while wrapped in a blanket. It's heaven. <laughs> and I also listened to an instrumental song playlist again. I listened to some hip hop music, which really reminded me of the character West from The Next Step, my favorite character. So as a reward, when I finished studying, I watched a best bits video of West and uh, it was the best thing in the world. So I've just finished my studying and it's about half past three. And this means I've completed my ancient history for the week. It's all done on Thursday. This never happens. <laughs> Next, I decided to do some work for my theatre group. As I said, I'm playing the queen in Sleeping Beauty and my director told me to look at Lady Capulet 
from Romeo and Juliet to kind of inspire me for my character. So this is me reading the scenes with her in and then that inspired me to watch some videos and stuff of people actually playing Lady Capulet and seeing how they move and stuff and I watched some people playing queens and that sort of thing in theatre productions and that actually made me feel pretty down. I felt really insecure about how I'd been playing the character so far. I felt like I really hadn't been doing it well and I was also upset about my dress so as you can see I had a bit of a cry about it. I think that was good though, helped me get it out and I managed to feel a little bit better by watching some YouTube while I ate my dinner and then I listened to some music to get me hyped up for yoga class. This is another thing that I do just to break up my week, give me something fun to look forward to. I actually run to my yoga class which is really really fun and makes it a lot easier and just is great for clearing my head and getting some good exercise. I'm really irritable today. Okay, what happened this morning? I felt really, really irritable. Felt really in my own head and just like didn't want to do anything. And, and you know, sometimes when you feel so low that you like don't, you just, you just want to feel low. It's like, I don't, just don't, happiness is not overrated. Like, I just want to feel like this forever and I read something someone said the other day about like you fall down to the floor and like it's comfortable on the floor but you have to get yourself back up so I think that's sort of what I was feeling I was like it's comfortable down here I'm just gonna stay being irritable and annoying and sad and all that so it wasn't very nice but eventually I put on some music cried again <laughs> I think three, three times crying is perhaps a little bit over my average now so yeah I sort of felt like I needed to write about what I was feeling I needed to journal about it so eventually I managed to get myself to do that um, so I only wrote about a page but I feel so much better I just was I, I, like I already had the answers in my head to my problems but I kept forgetting them and I was like, I don't want to believe this or like, you know, but when you put it down on paper, you just, it's in front of you and I just know what I want to do now. So basically this morning I was supposed to go out at 8. Nobody told me to go out at 8. I, well, I decided I was going to go with my dad to his work. He works right next to a library in a different town, a lot more interesting town than the town I live in. It's about 15 minutes away. Um, so sometimes I take a lift with him to his work and then I go to the library while he goes to work. I study in the library and then I go into town and usually get the bus back. So I was planning to do that today. My dad wanted to leave early, he wanted to leave at 8. So I agreed. Then I decided that I didn't feel good enough to go at 8. Not in terms of like, I don't feel worthy. <laughs> in terms of, I just felt bad. No, that still doesn't work. Um, I felt rubbish when I woke up, didn't want to leave at 8. So I told my dad I wasn't coming, I would go on the bus later when I was ready. And it feels a little bit like, you know, you could interpret this as like, if you don't get practice, getting to places on time, then how are you going to deal with it at uni? Or when you have a job and stuff like that. But I think that's something that is a bit dumb. That's just things something that people say when they're like insecure about whether they'd be able to do it. I've had plenty of practice getting to places places early and on a deadline. I can do things on a deadline, I know that, I'm like assured in that. So there's no point like forcing myself to do something that is going to make my day worse and probably going to make me not productive. There's no point me doing that just to prove myself that I can because I know I can. So instead I had to prioritise feeling good. So basically the moral of all this I think is that sometimes it does just take time. You know, I'm lucky enough that I could take the time. Took a little extra time to feel a bit better. Did some journaling. Now I feel excited again. Um, although I'm probably not going to be excited when I have to study this book.
For my packed lunch, I made a cold noodle salad with a peanut sauce and this is a recipe that I adapted from actually a recipe that was in a YouTube video so I will link that down below. Then I got the bus about 10.30 and went to the library and going to the library to study is something that I try and do about once a week. I don't manage it every week but it just really really helps. Again it's this thing about breaking up your week, making sure that your schedule is not so monotonous like if I have a day where yeah I'm still studying but I'm in a different environment and I get to go outside on the way then it just helps me stay motivated and I really enjoy studying in the library because it's really quiet there, other people are working and also like people walk past you sometimes, they walk past your computer screen and you know you don't want to just be like procrastinating like watching YouTube or something in case they look over your shoulder so that always encourages me to just focus on the task at hand and be professional about it. What I was doing in the library was polishing and organising my notes for one of my English texts, Small Island, and this took about an hour and a half and then I went to a nearby park to eat my lunch. Then I went back to the library to take some notes on a Robert Frost poem by just researching it on one of the library computers. That again took a little over an hour and then I walked into town, didn't do much today, just went and looked at the Christmas decorations, bought the big issue, and then came home on the bus. Let's see how the planner's looking. Today was I pre ate productive? No. Did I meditate? No. Did I write? No. Read the razzle? No. But I have been out. That's one of the great things about going um, to the library to study is that I take off studying and going out. Oh, that's pink. I'm trying to get the purple one out. <laughs> there you go. Then I also have smiled today. The bus driver made me smile. I've decided not to reflect really this week. I'll probably, I'm going to take a break from doing that journal entry thing because I've already become hyper aware of my life through doing this vlog and I think that will give me all the reflection I need. <laughs> so I'm not going to do that. Uh, I don't really, oh, I have one thing to take off here, which is finishing my small island notes. Yay! Next up, did a bit of playing with my little sister. Mr. Phoebes? Daisy, this is embarrassing. <laughs> These two are gonna get married soon. Oh. <laughs> That's embarrassing. After this, I did read through my lines for the play and I'm pleased to report it did go quite well. I felt pretty good about it again. And I also read some of the rehearsal, my next English literature text to study. Uh, but apart from that, didn't really do many productive things. I just had my dinner, watched more YouTube uh, and took a shower. Oh, and I also started watching the BBC adaptation of Small Island, the book that I'd just taken notes on. And it's really, really good adaptation. Definitely recommend it. 